Welcome to a new episode of your program, Philosophy of Your Hajj. I am your host, Khalil Amunet, and joining us is Professor Muhammad Naim Asai. Of course, you all know him from his uh, show, Islamic Law Today. Uh, and he's been sharing us some of the deep insights about performing Hajj spiritually, not only physically, but trying to gain and grasp the true meaning of Hajj. Uh, Dr. Sai, can you share with us more of, uh, of your thoughts? Jazakallah wa khairan, inshallah ta'ala, bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, alhamdulillah rabbil alameen, wa salatu wa salam ala Sayyidina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in. Allahumma ya rabbana laka alhamdu kama yanbaghi li jalali wajhika wa azim sultanik, subhanaka la nuhsi thana'an alayik, anta kama athnayta ala nafsik. اللهم إني نحمدك حمد يوافي نعمك ويدفع نقمك ويكافئ مزيدك اللهم إني أسألك أن تجعل هذا الكلام كله خالصا لوجهك الكريم اللهم اجعل أعمالنا ونياتنا وأقوالنا كلها خالصة لوجهك الكريم برحمتك يا أرحم الراحمين اللهم ألهمنا رشدنا واستعملنا صالحين اللهم استعملنا ولا تستبدلنا فرج الهم عنا وعن المهومين ونفس الكرب عنا وعن المكروبين فك أسر المأسورين وأحسن خلاص المزجونين اللهم إن أسألك أن تجعل أيامنا القادمات أيام عز ورخاء وسخاء علينا وعلى المسلمين أجمعين في كل مكان يا رب العالمين اللهم عليك بالظالمين اللهم عليك بالطغاة المستبدين اللهم زلزل الأرض من تحت أقدامهم اللهم زلزل عروشهم اللهم كن مع الفئة المؤمنة التي تستنصر بك يا رب العالمين آمين اللهم آمين آمين It is very Special. I was very astonished by the introduction of this program, by this beautiful nasheed. Labbaik Allahumma labbaik. Labbaik la sharika laka labbaik. It is the original that Muslims, they keep saying, and it's very emotional. Uh, I was touched by this introduction, beautiful voice, beautiful meanings, beautiful words, as if that is a reminder about one of the greatest meaning of the Hajj. You are answering, you are renewing that kind of covenant you have made with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah has created you subhanahu wa ta'ala and this earth as generation after generation. But you go back by yourself with your father, Adam, is upon with him. Sayyidina Adam as a prophet, as a messenger, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made him the one who represent his commandments, subhanahu wa ta'ala, to represent his teachings, azza wa jal, to bring to this uh, mankind the best, the perfect, manual book for the whole mankind for their success for this happiness the perfection and then you are coming after all these years all these centuries to carry the same message but because you are the son of Adam as our father has forgotten one time when he was in a place where he should not be maybe disconnected from that covenant to be the worshiper of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala but because he is a human being part of it to forget as Allah says subhanahu wa ta'ala وَلَقَدْ عَيِدْنَا إِلَىٰ آدَمَ مِنْ قَبْلُ فَنَسِي 
ولم نجد له عزمة. We have given him our covenant that he should do this, he should restrict our order, our commandment, he should not forget about this, he should not disregard it, don't do this. But subhanAllah, Allah subhanahu wa has uh, made it very clear for everyone of his generation, Sayyidina Adam, it is part of us. We forget. Even the Prophet, والسلام, he forgot many times والسلام, when he was praying, sallallahu alayhi wa so. Because this is part of a human being. It's nothing wrong to forget. The wrong is when you are remembering the covenant of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to not fulfill it, to not activate it. The wrong of you forgot to just keep doing it and to try to cover that maybe mistake or that wrongdoing by many excuses. So Sayyidina Adam has repented to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Even he, he forgot something out of his hand, something part of his human being nature. But رَبَّنَا ظَلَمْنَا أَنفُسَنَا وَإِلَّا تَغْفِرْ لَنَا تَرْحَمْنَا كُنَّا مِنَ الْخَاسِرِينَ He repented to Allah with his wife Eve to seek the forgiveness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Mm. So we are part of this. We are generation, sons of Adam and Eve. So it's part of us to forget. Hajj comes to renew that covenant. أَلَمْ أَعْهَدْ إِلَيْكُمْ يَا بَنِي آدَمَ أَلَّا تَعْبُدُوا إِلَّا الشَّيْطَانِ Did I give you my covenant and you give me your covenant? It's like a mutual covenant between uh, you and I or me and you. Yes, to stick to my order, my commandment, my teaching and to not worship no one but me. And specifically don't worship a shaytan. أَلَّا تَعْبُدُوا الشَّيْطَانَ إِنَّهُ لَكُمْ عَدُوًا مُبِينَ in our life, as a Muslims, as a human beings, we try our best to keep ourselves in the track of Allah Taala, in the right path of Allah Taala. But as out of our nature, we forget sometimes, and this kind of of mistake we make because of our nature, we try to fix it by repentance, by making istighfar to Allah, asking His forgiveness, Azzawajal, making making it up by doing some such a good work in our life. So the Hajj has come to make all of this in one spot, in one trip, one journey. Labbaik Allahumma labbaik. As if that you are telling Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Oh my Lord, yes I know, part of my nature, part of my weakness, I forgot a lot, I made a mistake a lot, I commit a sin a lot, because not because I do love to disobey you. Not because I do love the sin. No. I don't love. I do not love to disobey you. Even I don't love to make a sin or commit a sin. But the sin sometimes is part of my desire, my human nature. But my heart, my mind, my everything in my body does not like to be in that situation. Does not love to be among those disobedient people. So, my Lord, forgive me. My Lord, I'm going to, to your house, Al-Kaaba, to renew this covenant because I am the son of Adam. Oh Allah, help me to just bring up this covenant again and again to be stronger and stronger, inshallah ta'ala. So this word, inshallah. this phrase of labbaik Allahumma labbaik, labbaik la sharika laka labbaik, the oneness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, obedience of him subhanahu wa ta'ala, and to the renewal of this covenant has come in one sentence. Labbaik Allahumma labbaik, labbaik la sharika lak labbaik. And then you say, inna alhamda wa ni'mata lak la sharika lak. As if that you are referring everything, you are appreciating, you are announcing that everything surrounding you from his bounty subhanahu wa ta'ala is coming from him subhanahu wa ta'ala. It's sometimes maybe very deep meaning of life just to focus on this phrase of labbaik Allahumma. But just very quick, as we said, Al-Hajj is a renewal of the old covenant Allah has made with Sayyidina Adam, our father. Now we are renewing this covenant, inshallah ta'ala. And of course, there's like uh, great wisdom in the fact that it's every year. Uh, because we're so many people, so many sins that need to be forgiven. 
And uh, we hear this resounding chant, uh, millions of people, which adds to this, this uh, spiritual atmosphere. Uh, it's a very, uh, uh, cap it captures your heart and attention. Yes, 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 indeed. The impact of, of this talbiyah is, is uh, endless, subhanahu wa ta'ala. Uh, just before I go to some other maybe uh, uh, important point in, in, in this um, very lovely program, because it's very lovely not because uh, I am doing it or you are doing it, but I am very uh, glad to have you in this program, mm -hmm. but it's very lovely uh, because this is uh, as if that I would like to, to live as you, inshallah ta'ala, to live in this moment. We are talking about something we have experienced before, we are, are not there yet, we we'll try just to live this moment by just talking about something good. As if that someone is so hungry and he did not have uh, the food yet, he started to talk about the food. They are mm. preparing very delicious, very tasty dish for him. Uh, he doesn't have it yet, but he's just trying to enjoy himself by talking about this dish before that dish will come to him. So this is the same thing, the same feeling in this program, alhamdulillah. So before I go to other point, uh, I just came to my mind, it's a very important issue here. Because we talk about that the hajj should be enough for every Muslim. As Allah has made it mandatory one, one time in life, it should be enough one time. If you made it one time, it should be enough to carry all the benefit we are. We have talked about and we are going to talk about, inshallah ta'ala. But when someone is uh, disregarding or maybe ignoring this great wisdom of having the hajj one time in our life, that maybe sometimes... Uh, maybe put him in the way of repeating uh, this hajj, he's a, a frequent hajji. Hmm. Well, it just frequent, goes without feeling maybe. Well, frequent hajji sometimes is good, sometimes not. Sometimes hmm. is bad. Yeah. Uh, and most likely, inshallah, is good, inshallah, inshallah. Because we have to give a benefit of doubt to anyone who's a frequent hajji, a frequent pilgrimage, mashallah ta'ala, because out of, as we said, love, out of that kind of fermenting, you know, feelings toward Al-Kaaba, toward every place in Mecca, Al-Mukarramah, we have this feeling, inshallah, we have this belief, inshallah, and everyone who is doing the Hajj every, every year, he wished to come back. As Allah says, that means they wish to repeat it again and again every year. It's part of the, uh, the special love Allah has put in this place, ta'ala. But sometimes frequent uh, pilgrimage or frequent Hajj, is not a good mm, yeah. meaning. How? Sometimes because he's not getting the benefit of the hash. He's just performing. Going through emotions, yes. Yes, exactly. He's just performing the out of the hash, as if that he's like a piece of wood, a piece of iron maybe. Uh, he's like acting. He's pretending like hash. But he came back with the same shape, the same condition, the same practice, the same maybe theories, the same thought, the same short of, of, of uh, understanding the real meaning of the whole Islam. So that means frequent hajj does not mean a good things, means a very bad things. Or sometimes it's a good, it's a bad meaning, not because of this meaning, maybe he's a good hajj, he's, he's performing very good, and he's uh, activating everything uh, in his life toward the hajj, but he is not directing his financial capability in a good way. Mm, and the meaning of that he might do the Hajj this year, the same way he did it the last year, and he did so good last year, he's about to, to do good this year, inshallah ta'ala, but he has some money where some other Muslim do not in, mm. in, in bad need this yes, money. Yes, yes, yes. Either because he did not make the Hajj, never he made the Hajj in his life, and he's a poor person, does not have enough money to make the Hajj. So is it, is it preferable for mm. that person? This is like Islamic law issue now. Yes, yes. Uh, I did put it in, in my book, uh, Kitab al-Jami'ah. Is it preferable for that uh, Muslim who has enough money to uh, make or perform the Hajj for the second or the third or fourth time to say, no, this year I will not make the Hajj, I will save this money and give it to someone who did mm. not make the hajj. That's such a great idea. MashaAllah, this is, this is unanimously among the Muslims, scholars, is very preferable. Very preferable to say, I'm not going to make the hajj this year. I'm going to give it to my brother, inshallah ta'ala. Maybe his, his brother his, from blood. 
maybe his uh, Muslim brother, maybe his neighbor, maybe someone who does not know him even. Like organization has been established to collect money from rich people to make uh, the Hajj is possible for someone who did not make the Hajj because he does not have enough money. Donate the Hajj, that would be right. like a great program. SubhanAllah. Think, so imagine that if someone, out of that feelings, out of that intention, he said, I'm not going to make this Hajj, the Hajj this year, I'm going to make my brother to make it, Shah Ta'ala. In that case, Masha Ta'ala, I hope that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, because the, the hadith of Nabi the, the Prophet so, saying, so. Salam, that Adalu al khair kafa'ali, that someone is guiding someone to do uh, good things, he will share him in the ajr. And man da'a ila ila hudan, that someone is like calling for, for a, a very blessed things, he will take the ajr uh, for himself and the ajr for that person, ta'ala, who's performing that good thing because of him, because of his help, because of his money. So this one way of making our hajj more, inshallah ta'ala, organized, more benefiting uh, the purpose of it, inshallah ta'ala. So the frequent hajj might be uh, doing better job, inshallah ta'ala, by not doing the hajj this year because of that meaning, inshallah, azawaj. Inshallah, and that's all the time we have uh, for us today. Inshallah, we'll go to a break, and we'll be right back. <laughs> Through the powerfully vivid, spiritually uplifting, heart-softening, life-changing, soul-transforming descriptions of life after death, we reminded ourselves about the barrier that is placed. So once you leave this world, a barrier is placed behind you, and you are prevented from coming back to this life. Those two rak'ahs that you used to pray, you used to take for granted. After you leave this world, there's a barrier. The journey of the soul through the stages of the day of resurrection and the explicit descriptions of hellfire as well as the beautiful and spiritually uplifting descriptions of paradise. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying, we did not create the heavens and the earth without purpose, without aim, without a reason. This is the assumption of those who disbelieve. So beware and low to those who disbelieve from the hellfire. And so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives us immediately the example of the righteous people on the Day of Judgment. So he says, Ala inna awliya Allahi la khawfun alayhim wa la hum yahzanun. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, No doubt, verily, the awliya of Allah, the friends of Allah, those who are close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, there is no fear on them, nor shall they grieve. Now you shall have to explain your whole life span, span, span. Like Allah. Welcome back. Thank you for staying with us. We were just having a conversation with uh, Professor Sa'i. He was talking about the importance of not only performing Hajj, but if you have the capability, you have the money, and you've been have your fair share of Hajj, you should donate it. Perhaps it will get you a great reward of going on the Hajj, and it'll also fulfill uh, another person's obligation. Uh, of performing the Hajj, I think that's like one of a very, very uh, great and important idea. Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen. And maybe the, this person, uh, he is rich enough, mashallah ta'ala, to make the Hajj for himself, the, for the second, third, fourth heap, and he has extra money to give it to someone to make Hajj. Because someone might argue, I said, well, I have enough money, is it uh, good? Is it uh, okay from Islamic law point of view mm. to make the Hajj for the fourth time? Well, I'm giving some money to someone to make the Hajj with me this, this year. Why not? It's good, inshallah ta'ala. But if you have just money, it's enough for one trip, one journey for the Hajj. And you have already made the Hajj for maybe the first time, the second, the third. Give it to someone who did not make it the Hajj, make the Hajj uh, never in his life. You know, uh, Hajj, it takes so much uh, savings and it takes so much time and effort. Uh, does some of the great benefit comes from actually putting that effort and, uh, you know, uh, 
and having the payoff of the Hajj. Uh, you know, I think in the, I've heard, you know, people who've gone to Hajj every year in Mecca. It's very easy to go on Hajj. But uh, they say nowadays we have it so easy. We just get on a plane or something. We arrive. We're in a five-star hotel, air-conditioned tent, you know. But they just think about in the past how people had to go on camel caravan sometimes for months, not even knowing if they were going to return. Yes. And I mean, just uh, the sheer effort it takes. Subhanallah. I mean, surely, you know, the payoff for them is so much greater. Exactly. I agree with you, inshallah, mashallah. Yes. That's why we say uh, in the Hajj, we should not go too far, too far from the real or the original performance of the Hajj. Mm. Because of this new technology now, and this for the easiness in transportation, and preparation, uh, uh, launching, and maybe all this stuff being prepared for you, the hotel and the food, and how to go from place to another place, uh, it should not, should not as a package, uh, takes you too far from the original performance of the Hajj. What we mean by that, the original performance of the Hajj should be having this kind of little hardship, little difficulties, little harsh time, because it's been meant in the Hajj to be the trip or maybe the effort of the weak person is not able to make real jihad in his life. Mm. Is the, the jihad for every week, jihad al da'if. The jihad the struggle for someone who is not able to make a real fighting mm. in the battlefield because he's weak, he's blind, he's sick, he's so old. Uh, for women, they cannot make uh, the fight. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made this hajj to be like the compensation, some kind of replacement of those that they cannot make the real jihad in their life. And this is another great meaning in the Hajj. As if that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make, make a connection, bridge, between those that they are able to make real jihad in their life, fighting, struggling, being in the borders, defending the Muslim countries and defending their people. And those that they cannot make this because of many excuses, as we mentioned before. He's a weak person, he's sick, uh, he's old, uh, he's blind. Anything does make him disabled to make the jihad, well, Allah has opened a door for him to have a little feelings of making jihad. So that jihad, by his word, والسلام, does give the original performance of the hajj. If the hajj will be now, in our modern days, uh, moving from its original performance of being very close to the meaning of the jihad, the real jihad, fighting and struggling, that means the performance in these modern days has gone far away from its purpose, and we should not do that. How could we fix this problem? By advising ourselves, recommending everyone who would like to make the Hajj, inshallah ta'ala, to keep this combination of easiness in these modern days about the transportations, our preparation, our the hotel, about the, uh, your stay here or there, and mix it, mix it with some roughness, some hardship, some difficulties, just to have the original feelings, to have the real impact of, of the Hajj. And that's why I called the Hajj of some people who did not uh, bring this meaning, or did not maybe understand the original meanings and perform the Hajj, I call Hajj al-Mutrafin, the, the Hajj of... Um, what they call it, uh, if you say like rich and famous sometimes. I mean, it's not just the rich and famous nowadays. Yeah, I mean, I, I, see, I see your point though, you know, they bust them. Sometimes, uh, I mean, when kings or some very famous people, it's understandable that they don't, for example, throw the jamarat with so many people around, you know, uh, bodily harm could come to you. But I mean, uh, I see your you see your point. You know, the lazy hajj, perhaps you can call it the. It's, it's, uh, well, because I did see this one. I did experience this. Yeah. I did make hajj many times in my life. Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen. Alhamdulillah. And the first time was the most maybe comfortable one, the most easiest one, the most maybe fancy one, the most luxurious one. And I did 
make another hajj after I had this experience because mm. I did not feel the real meanings, the real impact of the hajj on me. In that time, everything was prepared, air conditioning and fancy food, fancy tra transportation, even even the, the tent was so fancy. Was so luxurious, yes. So I did not feel uh, not the impact of, of the... Uh, when he said, Ali uh, Salam, Al Hajj was jihad, uh, is like jihad, uh, the weak person. And uh, the performance of the Prophet himself, Ali Salam, in the Hajj al Wada, was very crowded. Hajj it was very, uh, uh, maybe annoying and disturbing sometimes, uh, very hard, some hardship, some difficulties. Still, uh, one of his moments, Ali Salam, in, in his uh, performance, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, people they were uh, stepping on his foot, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, uh, harming him, alayhi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So uh, it was not easy one. So in that time, I did not feel uh, this way of, of hajj. So I decided the other year to make the hajj. A harder hajj, purposely. Not the harder hajj, but, but just try to make yeah. it as natural, as normal, as maybe original one as much as I can. Alhamdulillah. I think that's all the time we have. I mean, we can talk about this more, inshallah, in depth in the next episode. But I mean, personally, for my hajj, it was so hard. I got very sick after, you know, uh, all right. but uh, I recovered, alhamdulillah. Uh, that's all the time we have. Inshallah, you can join us uh, next time uh, for Philosophy Hajj. Thank you, Dr. Sai. Uh, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. <laughs> Thank you.